Good morning, everybody. June 29th, 2021, 936 a.m. And we're watching the last 18 or so hours of weather in the United States. And of course, we had Tropical Storm Danny. In fact, you can see Danny right about here. Yesterday, going into last night, we had landfall. We followed it pretty closely. We knew it wouldn't be super, super bad, but we did know it was a tropical depression and then a tropical storm right before landfall and just like that one through four are gone anna bill claudette and danny have all come and gone for the 2021 atlantic hurricane season and not even 12 hours after danny we already have a ton of questions and even confusion on the formation of elza and now i know why take a look at this our 2600 mile track has now probably around 2000 miles but yet look at this another multi thousand mile track a storm track another one a 20 percent chance of cyclone formation this is disturbance two this is now disturbance number one if you guys remember this was disturbance number two because danny was number one so we're just kind of boom 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 backtracking and now once again we have two areas to watch very closely and i'm going to show you why we have a bit of confusion going on with these two invests because a new set of data actually shows a hurricane a possible hurricane coming into the gulf and hitting louisiana trust me it shows it but first, my friends, we have a few things to talk about, one of which being a pretty significant earthquake. And by significant, I mean by the amount of people that felt it, the amount of movement caused by it, and not so much the number. We're looking at the San Francisco Bay Area, and each one of these blocks is someone having reported feeling this 3.9 quake, which was downgraded from a 4.2. So let's assume we were dealing with a 4.2 to about a 4.0 earthquake based on the amount of people that felt this. Now, I've lived in California before. I spent a few years there near Simi Valley in LA County. And trust me, I've felt earthquakes before. I've been through a 4.0 and higher. And even those differ depending on the depth. Sometimes they can feel like you're on a boat and riding up and down on waves kind of smoothly. Or you can feel like the ground is shaking underneath you. I'll switch this over to one day, 2.5 magnitudes. And we'll go ahead and zoom in here and take a look at the stats. Now, what's interesting about this quake is the amount of people that felt it. Look at that. Over 11,000 people, nearly 12,000 people haven't reported felt this. And this all happened quick. Again, this quake was about 16 hours ago, give or take. And within an hour, I saw on the Mary Greeley channel, there was already 10,000 people that reported feeling this quake. So very significant. There was actually damage reported. I was looking for pictures, but it was a little hard to find any pictures of damage. I know it's a little early and some things might pop up later on in the day. And until then, I'll keep an eye out. Absolutely, but you can see every single earthquake chart picked this up yesterday We can see over here on volcanodiscovery.com. They had also picked it up here if I could zoom in quick enough We got it right there San Francisco Bay Area 4.0 is being held strong here on the EMS slash CSEM channel So yes, for those of you that live in California You know that the depth is very very key when it comes to the West Coast earthquakes because we have them all the time. They're constantly going on, but that depth is very important. Those deeper ones, you don't really feel too much. That's when you get those little tiny tremors and you're like, oh man, was that an earthquake or, you know, a big truck driving by? When these things are just over five miles deep, it doesn't matter really how weak the quake is. You're going to feel it on that very unstable ground of the West Coast, especially the Bay Area. As we zoom into the location, you're going to notice that this thing took place right next to the MacArthur Highway, like literally. you Basically just a few houses away from that highway, and all it made me think of about was that earthquake in California where that lip of the bridge had collapsed and was all over the news for months and months and months and we all know the west coast is due and this will not be the last time we're covering this area or the west coast as a whole and my goodness if you thought two days ago was hot how about yesterday we had a heat wave going on literally on both sides of the country and I say that because I posted a picture on Twitter of my thermostat in my bathroom which hit a hundred and thirteen degrees and I'm here in the northeast and all over the news all you're hearing about is the northwest and rightfully so the northwest has broken records every single day consecutively for three and in some cases four days in a row now and it's going to continue today as you can see I'm the CMC heat wave chart here on Tropical Tidbits. If I move this thing into the future a little bit, we're kind of dealing with this rare anomalous heat wave going on in the northwest until the end of Wednesday, June 30th. And then after that, we can kind of see the next round of heat that comes into the west. And you can see it's more of a normal situation. This is usually what we see as far as those heat waves, that deep burgundy color down in Southern California and many times even further south. But to see this heat wave we just went through and the way it's affecting people and travel and all these other things is just incredible. So it's gonna be a lesson learned just as Texas was a huge lesson learned in the 
winter during that deep freeze when we had that Mexico blizzard. I'm sure many of you will never forget that. I certainly won't. We are hitting new highs, so to say, in the weather world. It seems like every single season is breaking significant records, and it just makes you wonder when are things going to level back out. Alrighty, let's try to break this down as best as we can, even though we all know it's going to change anyway, so let's figure out what we know so far. As we discussed in the beginning of the video, we have two separate disturbances now, aside from Danny, which has come and gone. We have the remnants right here over land. This is going to disappear and will be no more, and now we're moving on to Elza, which is the next name on the National Hurricane Center 2021 Atlantic list, and one of these could become Elza sooner than later. Now, I'm not predicting a hurricane. I'm just going to show you the available data we have and sort out the confusion because we've had this orange track here which is now a bit shorter because obviously the storm has moved over time but it basically began right about here where this one is and we measured a 2600 mile storm track very close to what this new disturbance is being measured as but when we go to tropical tidbits this is where things get confusing so first let's match up exactly what we're looking at we have a area we're watching right here this is our 40 percent the one we've been looking at and then a little bit further back right about here is that new 20 percent yellow color so let's switch back and now you can get a better idea of what we're talking about so this orange one here disturbance number one we're going to track and we're going to track disturbance number two, the 20% chance of cyclone formation, which actually shows formation while this one doesn't. So as you can see right away, by the time we get to the Leeward and Lesser Antilles Islands on July 3rd, we already have the formation almost a hurricane. Will that happen? I don't know. We're going to see. Let's backtrack and follow this step by step. And if you notice, the one that forms is actually the 20% chance, the new one, the one we just found out about as opposed to the higher percentage storm that is out in front, that is expected to go along the northern edge of the Leeward Lesser Antilles and north of Puerto Rico and then the Dominican Republic and towards the Bahamas, while the 20% down here is forecasted to go a little further south and tracking as of right now right into the Gulf of Mexico and then Louisiana. Taking the front page of this story and tracking right into the Gulf, you can see it right here between Cancun, Mexico and Cuba, by July 6th. I know we're way into the future now, but I'm just showing you the possibilities of this thing. And then once it gets into the Gulf, we have no clue where it could go. Right now, the chart is showing Louisiana. It pretty much shows that every time we have a possible hurricane in the Gulf. So in conclusion, we don't have much to worry about right now as far as weather and the danger of a hurricane, but we have two very long storm tracks that we're going to be following over the next two days and then five days basically we're going to follow these until they don't exist anymore and it's just a vibe guys i don't know if you're feeling it or not but i think the atlantic ocean is really starting to wake up i don't think we're going to see many days without some of these things on the chart as we do throughout the winter and then at some point this summer i expect to see six or seven of these at the same time we all remember that from last summer I'm going to continue breaking down these two storms as time goes by, and I have a couple other things I'm working on to show you later on today, I'm hoping, to actually get another upload out that I think you guys will really enjoy. So, with that said, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the support over the last couple of days. The channel's doing very well, and it's because of all you guys. So, shout out to Canada. It is now 9.56 a.m. Got some stuff to do, but I will be back later. Stay safe. Stay cool, please questions, comments, concerns, leave down below. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.